Hey everyone, it's Benny here, we're back, and in this video we're going to be doing a little bit more of our user input, and in the next video we'll finally start building the actual calculator. So, here's what we're going to need to do. The calculator takes two inputs that it does math with. And so right now we need to address the issue of we need two numbers. We also need to address the issue of th there's nothing stopping someone from just putting in two numbers at once like this and that can get the user some numbers they don't expect. So, we're going to be addressing both those problems in this video. First thing, we're going to have to go into the world of memory. And I have finally learned my lesson about doing the memory wires before the, um, what's it called? Before the busing. So, I'm going to do that. We're going to need a total of eight. Because we're having two inputs, they're both four bits, so we're going to need a total of eight wires. I think that's seven. Okay, one more. Okay, that's eight. And this is going to be the only memory in the entire calculator. It's just purely for the purpose of for, purely for the purpose of knowing the user inputs and giving the user a nice, easy way of interacting with the calculator. And yeah, almost done. Okay, now I just need to put redstone on all these. And I may more may not need a repeater. I'm not completely sure about that yet. Okay, I will need a repeater at the end of all of these. Oh well. Again, I'm not too concerned about efficiency in the user input system because it's just going to it's not going to be synced up with the device so the user will never know the difference. Okay. Now the way we're going to have to transfer this downwards is diagonally, so that's how you do a diagonal transfer downwards, just torches like this. And now we've got two copies of the information on the, whatever the boss happens to have. So, there we go. We... Crap, I did not consider that. Okay, here's how I'm going to solve this. Going to take the entire thing. Cut. Move over one. Paste. Problem partially solved. Oh, I'll need to fix that, of course. That won't be that bad. Okay, there we go, and I think it's not going to reach anymore. Oh, hey! Oh, what do you know? It does. So, we're still good there. That's good. And now we'll need a system of memory to remember the inputs. And I'm j mm, I'm just gonna build it. Why not? So the way this is gonna work is we're going to do this wire squiggle, and then we're going to put power. Is this even gonna work? Do I even have a? Okay, no, I don't have enough room for this. I was I was curious about that. And also, I do need to start with repeater. So need more room in a repeater. Starting again, doing it actually right this time. Power that. Peter here. This is a basic memory cell if you want to know how this works. Look at my Building a Minecraft Computer Tutorial series, videos 6 and 7. It shows you how to build this. Well, it doesn't just show you to build, it shows you how it works and all that, all that good stuff. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here, then here. I'm going to use the... Is that going to... Yeah, it's going to work. I'm going to use the stack command and we'll edit. So stack, I'm going to do 7 because I need that. That's how many total I need. Plus this one. And there we go. This may or may not be working. Uh, oh, that's probably why. Now I do want these to write separately, so I'm just going to do this. And again, if you want to know more about memory systems, look at that video. 
Oh yes, I also need these. Very important part. So now that our bow have zero. Issue two, they're containing inverted outputs. Way to fix this, this has the output. Uninvert. And now we finally have the actual numbers that are going to go into the calculator. So, wow. And of course, again, more about memory systems, building a Minecraft computer tutorial series. So there. Now, we have memory for it, and we have a busing system. So, what we need to do now is we need to fix the lever problem. Easiest way to do that, just go back to buttons. Whoops. Okay, and I'm going to have to fix that, because that's now... Yeah. Be careful not to do that. That's going to cause you a bunch of pain if you do that. Okay. And again, this introduces yet another problem. The information is there for only about half a second, and then it's gone. And it also doesn't write to the memory. So, the way we fix this, we're going to need a fifth wire. That might seem a little bit odd, but we're going to have a fifth wiring system. And what we're going to do with this is every time one of those, once someone hits a button, it's going to send power to this wire. I'm going to do a second one above, and I'm just going to combine them like I did with, with all the other wires that we built in this. And we're going to use this wire, because whenever the, this wire turns on, they're going to have hit a button. What we're going to do with this wire is we're going to know when the user hits the... the oh, what's it called? <laughs> we're going to use this wire to know oh, whenever the user hits a button. So, same thing we did before. Now, every time I hit a button, that wire should turn on. That's going to tell me that I need to write to memory. And, okay, now we're just going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the center of the memory. Just drag this over. St just sort of staircase this up a bit. And there we go. This is going to go over to the memory, and now we're going to have to do something. And here's what we're going to have to do. First off, we're going to need to expand the user control panel. Because now we need a lever to, to select which input we're sending, whatever number we're passing in as. We could add some really complicated system to do this automatically, but it's not worth it. So this is send as input a slash b. This toggles between a and b. That's great. So, to do this, I'm going to need to send this over to memory. Same as the... as this. I'm going to need to build an interesting redstone device. I don't know if this has an official name to it. I do, however, know that it w works more or less identically to a, a real-life transistor, so that's usually what I call it. But, so, the way this is going to work is I'm going to two inputs into this. One will be inverted, the other will be normal, and I can't do it like this because it's not enough space. But there we go. I'm just going to back that up a bit, because I don't need it that close. Now we're going to need to invert them. And that's what this wire is going to control. It's going to have be part of a... I didn't give enough space for this. Silly me. But oh well.
Okay, now again, passing it through here, and I'm gonna actually do the torches off to the side because it's gonna make it easier. Now I want to power these because it's a control wire. And I'm probably gonna need a repeater somewhere along here. Yeah, I thought as much. So, there we go. Now I just need to s hook these up to the... Hmm. Well, if I can, I'm gonna need to hook these up to the system. There we go, that's one. And the other one I'm probably gonna do the same way. There we go. So right now, it should be sending whatever I write as input A. And it's not, and I know why. It's because the input is disappearing before that's gone. Simply need to delay the arrival of the in inputs. And it should work beautifully. But it's... Hey! That wrote as input A, so I have to select input B, and I select that to be number 3. Hmm. Well, I've clearly screwed something up somewhere, so I'll be right back once I figure out what I screwed up. And I'm back. The issue was really simple. I was just missing a repeater. This wire was running out of power. So, nothing spectacularly bad there. If you ever want to clear the memory, just hit zero and start flicking this up and down, and there you go. Clears the memory. So there we go. This is our basic setup for the calculator. And in the next video, we'll we will finally be able to introduce this to doing some math. So thank you. See you in the next video.